Hey guys, so normally I would be talking you through what you need to paint along with me for my next lesson, which by the way is on September 20th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But because this time we are covering another one of my huge passions, which is costume makeup, we are going to do a two-part lesson. So I'm actually not only going to be walking you through supplies, but I'm going to be showing you how to build our prosthetics for our voodoo doll makeup. So um, to start, you're going to want your handy dandy blow dryer, which pretty much everyone has one of those laying around. Um, if you live in my area, I live in Yukaipa, uh, in Cala Mesa on County Line Road, there's a store called Best 99. <laughs> Bruce, you want to help me show everybody what they need? My three-year-old is. You want to help me? Come here. Come on. So, Best 99 on County Line Road in Cala Mesa sells all kinds of really awesome craft supplies. $1.29 for this set of all sorts of different size styrofoam balls, which you can see I already painted a few of the small ones. I literally just smudged paint on with my fingers. And I used some old fashioned Q-tips. I pulled the cotton off of them and painted them with silver paint. And I'll walk you through how we're gonna turn those into fake needles for our voodoo doll costume in a little bit. I picked up a costume makeup supply set at Rite Aid. This is probably the only item <laughs> Yeah, he's much more interested in showing you his Um, This is probably the only item I refuse to buy from the dollar store. And the reason why is because while these things sit on the shelf for a long period of time, <laughs> while they sit on the shelf for a long period of time, their composition changes. <laughs> and, uh, hold on, cut. <laughs> Put on today's makeup lesson, Bruce. Mommy. What? No, we're not going to use rubber bands. No, man. <laughs> All right, so let's get started on our fake needles. I have my styrofoam balls. I've got my Q-tips, which I pulled the cotton off of and painted silver. <laughs> the wind wants to... I just really think that the video gods don't like me today. <laughs> so Q-tips, pulled the cotton off of them, painted them silver. I'm gonna take my skewer, find the side of each ball that I want to show the least, and get a good hole started for that. Okay. Put a little bit of glue, a little dab, tiny dab of glue in there. I like this glue because it dries clear, so that makes it easier to hide faux pas. I'm gonna take the end of my Q-tip that I was holding because it's still white. And just stick it right in that hole I made so that later I can stick it on wherever. And I'm gonna set this aside to dry. We're gonna do this with the rest of our balls and Q-tips. I'm making about six. You can make more or less if you want. And then when we're done with this, we're gonna move on to the really fun part, which is building our areas for stitching for our forehead, our neck, and then also a little pocket, which is gonna basically make it look like our heart is sewn inside of our chest. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes when I'm done with these needles. Okay. All right, now that I'm done with my fake needles, we're gonna move on to the other fun, gorier parts of the prosthetics. So I have my masking tape here. I'm gonna start with my chest. I've already used a ruler to measure my forehead, my neck, and my chest. And I know that the chest pocket that I'm making is gonna be four inches by four inches. Put probably one more layer of tape around the outside just so that I have some spots to put liquid latex on. And it doesn't have to be 
perfect edges. In fact, you're probably gonna end up cutting it a little bit, like especially if you're a female like me, when you get down into the cleavage, you're gonna have to cut kind of a heart shape so that you don't end up having your prosthetic peel off of you later. So, now that I have a square down, I'm gonna take my liquid latex that came in my packet, as well as one of my sponges, whichever you prefer. I like to use the one that's a little bit more coarse for this project because we are trying to create texture. So we are gonna start by cutting our latex open, and putting some on our sponge, and just laying out a nice, thin, maybe coat it on first and then texturize it if you want. It. Once you get that coated really well in liquid latex, ooh, I can smell it. We're gonna take our toilet paper and start taking squares, kind of pat them down on there. We're basically doing like a paper mache technique, which I learned um, from a, another YouTube user. Uh, she, her YouTube page is called Ellie Mac SFX Makeup. She does a lot of really cool stuff. And I learned this technique from her. The one thing that I did not like about the way that she did it, so now that we got our, our tissue down, we're gonna lay another layer of latex over it. One thing I didn't like is what she did would be great for a movie or something like that. But if you're going to like a, a Halloween party, her whole, all of her prosthetics totally covered her entire face. You would not be able to like drink a drink or like talk to your friends or anything like that. And I really wanted to create something that was a little bit more practical for home people at home who might want to do something similar to this. So I am blotting on, I'm creating texture with my liquid latex. And I, you can see I'm kind of overlapping onto the tape a little bit so that I can kind of thicken it up. And it's looking like I don't have enough liquid latex for my project and I might have to go pick up some more. So if you're someone who frequently shops from Amazon or something like that, if you want to use this costume this year, I would recommend maybe buying some bulk liquid latex online. So we're gonna let this dry thoroughly. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes to dry to the touch, up to an hour or even sitting overnight to become totally cured where you can peel it off without tearing it apart. So you can use your blow dryer to assist you and make it go faster but then you still want to be careful because you're running the risk of the surface drying and the underneath still staying uh, wet and then it's still going to be just as fragile as it would if it was totally wet. So let's let this dry and we'll come back and continue on with our next step. See you guys in a few. Alright guys, so this is proving to be the most difficult video I have ever shot. I just went to Rite Aid to buy more latex, which of course they didn't sell just latex, and to buy another whole package. So I'm gonna do this next step, and then tomorrow I'm gonna have to continue the video after making the long 20 minute drive to Redlands to buy a big bottle of liquid latex. So I already walked you through that square that I created, and I set that aside to dry, and I'm making another square now. So I've done everything that I just walked you through, except this time I'm going to build it up a little bit thicker. So I let my first layer dry. I'm gonna lay down another thin layer of liquid latex, spread it on there, 
at least one more layer of latex and one more layer of tissue. I would recommend probably two, but we're gonna also do some texturizing as we talked about before with our fishnet or a uh, wig cap rather. So let's get this laid on. Let's lay down one more layer after this one of tissue and latex. And when we come back, we're gonna talk about texturizing. And also we're gonna cut this one a little bit so that we can create the pocket for our heart and make it look like our heart is sewn into our chest. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. This place is you learn a lot of things from You Can Paint. You learn when you don't have enough liquid latex. You learn that trying to film a video without a babysitter when you have a three-year-old is a no-go. And we're gonna learn also about creating a burlap texture with a neck cap. So let's cut it open. My latex is still wet. I have just enough latex to finish it, basically. And I'm gonna cut this open so that it's a nice sheet. And take my push pin. So I'm gonna pin my net cap down. And then I'm gonna pin it down over here. Thumbtacks are sticking to the liquid latex that's all over my fingers. Okay. Pull that down. And here. See, I'm stretching it out so that I get a good texture. One more. Here. Stretch. And I'm gonna press this down on my latex and my tissue paper. And it's gonna leave an imprint. And it's gonna create this sort of fabric, burlap kind of texture to it. Okay. Now, if you have enough latex, hopefully I do, and you want to even intensify that texture even more, get a little bit more. Haha. <laughs> Can't beat us. Let me cut that. Open. Get some more latex on my sponge. And just really kind of dab that texture into my latex while it's still wet. Let's do the same thing with this other one over here. Waste not, want not, right? I'm really gonna, I mean, you wanna just beat this thing into your latex so that you get that texture imprinted in there. And then the next thing, which is really important, you don't want to slide the net off. You want to peel it off so that you don't mess with that pattern that you just created. And it's okay that some of it's peeling off. That's all right. We made it thick enough. We almost kind of want that. So let's take a look at our first piece of our prosthetic completed. It's got a nice kind of burlap texture to it. It's got some tears on it, which is totally cool. It's gonna add to the texture. It's the right size to fit on my chest. I'm gonna paint my heart and put it on top and we'll fit our other piece over it, cut it, sew through it, and we're gonna end up with a really, really cool look when we're done with it. 
So let's keep going on to our next piece for our prosthetic. Hey guys, um, sorry you can't see my face. Uh, I don't have a cameraman. I've been like trying to work this out for days, so I kind of just made myself a makeshift tripod out of a red Dixie cup, and it seems to be working out okay. So um, we're gonna make the prosthetic for our forehead. I already measured my forehead with a ruler, and I know that I don't want it to be any longer than an inch and a half, two inches maybe, um, so that I don't have to worry about cutting too much of it off. So, what I'm gonna do is lay down a piece of tape, and then at the two inch mark, Basically, what we want to create is more of like a V shape. At the top, we want them to be about, oh, half an inch apart. And we want it to come together like this. So you can see I'm making kind of like a V shape. We're gonna build up our tape a little bit. Remember, this point right here is my cut. All right, so we've got about three layers of tape. And what we're gonna do, take another little short piece of tape, try to get it a good, like, kind of square edge. And we're gonna lift this one up. And apply it to the tape I already laid down. But do it so that there's like a free edge here so that we can fold it over and make these kind of little, and we have like a flap here, right? We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. That is the base for our forehead prosthetic. And we're just gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna layer some tissue and a um, little bit of liquid latex on there. Maybe apply a little texture in effect if we feel like we need it. And then um, lace it up. And, uh, or sorry, apply makeup and then lace it up. So uh, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Popsicle. 
I don't think there are any, baby. I don't know why you want one anyway. It's cold outside. No.
All right, guys, um, I'm gonna do my best to keep it together. I may or may not be hungover, but I'm working hard for you. So is Rob, he's hungover too, but he's my cameraman. So everybody say hi, Rob. Okay, we're gonna start with closing our eyebrows down. We talked about drag queens earlier in the video. So I'm just gonna, 
basically my eyebrows down to the We're going to let those dry, and in the meantime, we are going to cut up our prosthetic to fit our feet. We want as little free edge as possible so that we can move around freely while we have on our prosthetics and not have to worry about them falling off. If you have very oily skin, I would recommend maybe using an astringent on your skin beforehand. Liquid latex is very sticky. You're probably safe even without the astringent, but having it just sort of helps make sure that there's no oil preventing the latex from sticking to your skin. Trim this top just a little more so that we can move our head up and down without it being uncomfortable. Plus we're gonna have to apply more tape tissue paper so that it blends in really well. There we go, that's better. Now I know I can move my head up and down and it's not gonna get in my way. Two are ready, and last but not least, our heart. This one's gonna probably require a lot of trimming. Here comes the fun part. Liquid latex. Or actually, I'm sorry. First things first, flat grease paint. We want to get just the center of our forehead that's going to be poking through our seam there in the middle. Don't go too far out because as we mentioned before, we want a grease paint free area to apply latex to. So let's check that. Work it up in our hair a little more. Maybe get our entire a pretty simple, messy, fun thing going on. It probably couple well with like some crossbones, hair ties. You can usually find those at the dollar store this time of year. All right. So we're gonna apply latex to our skin and the back side of our prosthetic and let it sit for a few minutes and get tacky. And then that the latex sticks very well to itself. So you just wanna remove the latex on the back of your prosthetic. Put that aside. Some on your face. This is why we put the glue over our eyebrow because it is really hard to get latex out of your eyebrows, but a glue stick is washable. So it just kind of helps smooth it down and then we don't have to worry about the liquid latex getting in our hair. 
hairs and ripping out all of our eyebrows later. Deal latex on the back side of our prosthetic all the way to the edges on this one because we're going to have to curve it over our shoulder. So it just stays upside down. You might notice too, I've got like an old tube top that I don't care about on. You cannot get this latex out of fabric in there. So just bear, keep in mind that when you're working with latex, you want to make sure that you're working with clothes you don't care about and on surfaces so you can easily peel the latex off of either porcelain, glass, vinyl, anything like that. Wood is Now my tap two is going to make it a lot trickier for me to blend this prosthetic in. You probably won't have that problem at home because most people don't have giant tattoos across their chest. Um, if you do, this Ben Nye grease paint covers really well. You can cover it with the Ben Nye white and then set it with powder and then put your foundation over that. chest first so that if there's any overlapping the one on my neck will be over that and we can blend them in together. without it being obvious on the screen. So while we let our latex get good and tacky on our prosthetic, we will put some black give our latex about a good 10 minutes to completely dry and set and cure before we come in and start covering it with more latex and tissue and basically tapering our prosthetics onto our skin and then we'll cover it all with makeup. So I'll see you guys in about 10 minutes.
We're just going to keep repeating this process with liquid latex and tissues until we have our prosthetics totally tapered in to our skin so that they don't look like they're stuck on, that they look like they're actually a part of our body. And when we're done, we'll come back and we'll talk about the makeup and how we are going to make this all blend in and apply shadows and um, continue the lacing with makeup. So we'll see you guys in a few. All right, guys, so I tapered everything out. I'm not too worried about this part because it's going to get covered up with my dress. I was very careful to avoid my eyes when I was doing my eyebrows. And you can kind of see, I also used my uh, hair net and some liquid latex to apply some texture to my face. Now I just really need to let this dry for like a good 15 minutes at least, and then we'll do the makeup. I lost my cameraman because his appointment just showed up. He's got to do a tattoo. So in the meantime, while my stuff's drying, I'm going to try to rig up a camera. So I'll see you guys soon. All right, guys, here goes. Um, I do want to mention that this part was actually, I'll admit, pretty tricky to get to taper out. You can still even see it a little bit. I had to do a few layers of tape as well as tissue paper to get that one to taper out. So start with our foundation. And we're just gonna start caking on the makeup. It's the time of the season When your love runs high In this time, give it to me easy And let me try with pleasured hands To take you in the sun To promise lands To show you everyone What's your, name? What's your name? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Is he rich? Is he rich like me? Has he taken us any time? Any time to show to show you what you need to live. Tell it to me slowly. Tell you why. I really want to know.
All right, apologies. So I have here, what I'm using is um, Bahama Mama. It's by The Balm. It's just a matte bronzer. I've got a nice soft brush. Basically this way, I don't need that. I'm going to use it to apply uh, like a drop shadow. Unfortunately, the only brown eyeshadow I have is some shimmery stuff, which we don't really want, but we'll make it work. Who ran a muck in Kent? Lately he's been overheard in Mayfair. You better stay away from him. He'll rip your lungs out, Jim. I'd like to meet his tailor. probably apply some more white grease paint to our twine on our prosthetics again to help it all blend in together. Grab your telephone, stop 
All right, guys, home stretch. I apologize about that. Of course, my phone ran out of space right on the last couple of steps, so I had to go put the videos on my computer and make room. So next up is uh, we're going to take our pins that we made before and basically just dip it in your liquid latex here. Don't worry, we can put makeup over it. Very gory, voodoo doll costume makeup. What do you guys think? I hope you like it. I hope you enjoyed um, learning with me and watching all of my mistakes. And if you do choose to use this for your costume, please post pictures. I would love to see what you guys come up with at home. So in the meantime, happy painting.